Welcome to the Connie G Show, everybody. My name is Conrad, and how are you, buddy? Um, apologies for my appearance. Got a little bit of dust on me today, and I, I haven't had time to to wash it off, or as George W. Bush would say, wash it off, but um, I will pretty soon. I'll walk back in. I, I own about a third or a tenth of an acre here in Prague, Oklahoma, and... I'll walk inside and I'll wash it off, but my kids are in the shower right now. So, I'll get to that later. Um, Today is the 1st of December, do you remember, baby? And uh, that means it's the holiday season. So, if you're feeling like giving is the most important thing to you during the holidays, which it should be, uh, consider possibly subscribing to the show just subscribe on itunes or spotify the connie g show um youtube go to con radio it has not only the connie g show but uh those guys from wichita and the other projects that we have involved the okay taco show uh video stuff and there's gonna be more of that um i didn't realize i had this much dust on me till i started doing the show and so now as i'm looking at myself in the in the video thing here like looking at what you're seeing I realize I look like, um, I don't even know, like a, you know, a movie character, but probably like, maybe I look like one of those guys from Home Alone that got all the tricks played to him or something, and uh, one of the tricks was getting dust poured over them, but it was not a trick. What happened, really, with my appearance is this, um... So, stupidly, and I told you guys this last time, stupidly, I was like, hey, let's do Thanksgiving at the taco shop, even though it's not done yet. And it kind of gave us, you know, from whenever that decision was made up until Thanksgiving, it kind of gave us like a deadline to get certain things done. And... So what had happened is we poured this concrete slab in the bathroom. Now, we're talking about 1933 Texaco Station. When 1933 was existing, people didn't care. And people still probably don't care. But people didn't care in 1933 um, whether or not fish were going to be able to access certain things. So if you were a fish person... And, you know, and you were in a wheelchair bound or you were uh, elderly or whatever required ramps or railings or whatever it is. In 1933, people would be like, no, we don't have that. And if you like go somewhere else or don't eat or whatever, nobody cared in 1933. So if you were a fish in 1933, it didn't matter. You know, you would be like, hey, I can't get into your Texaco to go potty. And somebody would be like, I don't care. Go away. You're, you're grossing me out. But throughout the years, we've evolved and we've progressed and we've, we've got more rules and stuff that require people that probably don't normally care about fish to, if they want to be in business to the public, they have to have certain things. Um, and so without disrupting the integrity of a historical building we have to then do our best to make it as compliant as we can to not ruffle any feathers in the fish world or more importantly it's not even the fish world because i think the fish were fine before i think it's more like we we can't ruffle any feathers in the people whose job it is to make sure that your fish acceptable and so without any experience at all or any background in creating um, ADA compliant facilities, I, along with Shannon, you know, put a chair in the middle of the room. We kind of looked around and said, now what are we going to do? And we come up with a plan. And previous to our purchasing of this gas station, there was a um, basically, like they whittled out, you know, there, it's concrete block that is what builds our taco shop. 
center block and they whittled out a doorway and then they with two by sixes framed in this doorway and that their header was actually two by six. They didn't have any metal up there or anything. It's nothing was to code. And it wasn't such a huge width anyways that that I don't think that it was that big a deal. Cause there was no weight on the I mean, we took that header and those those pieces down and it wasn't even touching the brick that it was it was more just trim. Um and it was hiding that. So we come up with a plan and our plan was to remove the subfloor that they had built because it was bullsh- bullshit and and the toilet had sunk into it because some overweight fish sat on it and you know everything just looked pretty bad and so removed just take it all out and then we poured a concrete slab into one side of it and then in our So, uh, I don't know how much I want to go into it. I'll go into it as much as I can. Uh, I mean, I'll just go into it. I'm gray. I'm looking at myself. I'm gray. So, we poured basically half of this, the entrance. And then we, we put a piece of metal up as our header. And then we put mortar in there and to, to keep the metal in there. And now we're code. And anything under the metal su- supposedly is fine. And so the doorway is now fine. And then we're going to leave it without the two by sixes in there because it gives you a little bit more width if you're going to be fishing in. And so we just got, we, I just said, well, what I'll do is I'll get um, my grinder and a masonry wheel on it and I'll smooth out some of these edges so no fish don't catch on them. And then you get in there and we're just trying to make this bathroom safe and effective, you know what I mean, for fish and for other people. So the other part where the the toilet flange goes and all that stuff goes, um, we had not poured that yet. And Thanksgiving was coming up. And and one of the bigger issues was our actual sewage drain. Because in the olden days, in the 1933, the bathroom was on the outside of the building. So that's how this was. And then they just whittled that hole. But there's actually two bathrooms out there, and they both have tiny doors that you could access them. And so what I said to Shannon is like, why don't we do this? We'll pour this, and then we'll pour the other half, and then we'll put our toilet flange down. It'll be level. It's a new concrete. It's concrete. We don't have to worry about it, you know. And um, he was like, well, the bigger problem is, is our right now our drain's going into that outer bathroom the one that's not accessible the one they didn't whittle a hole through because there's now there's just like a basically a mop room or a, there's a there is a drain to the sewage but that's where the whole restaurant stuff was running and it was open like there was just a uh 90 on the end of a pipe and it was open and just dumping you know all the different crap that you would have going through a restaurant into a sewer system and then no door no nothing spiders and crickets in there and so he's like, you know, I'm, he was also concerned. Sure. I'm concerned that somebody's going to come in here and make sure that fish are here, but I'm also concerned that they're going to go around there and be like, you guys can't have your sewage being dropped into an open drain, you know? And the smart move at that moment would have been like, well, let's just box in, pour a little bit of concrete, set a new flange and then put that drain into a proper thing and then act like that's how it was. Cause we're not allowed to do plumbing work. So we're not right. (laughs) Okay. Um, So his plan was, well, let's cut that drain pipe where it's in the building, um, put on a new end to it, run it into our existing bathroom, get a sweep, um, a three inch pipe, and then a whatever the drain pipe was, like two and three quarter or two and a half probably. And then have the drain pipe go into the actual beneath the toilet. But the problem is that meant that the top of that piece that we bought that has the sweep on it, um, in order to set our flange, we had to raise our concrete. And so now we're raising our concrete a few inches on the toilet side, which is okay because you actually want it higher 
for handicap accessibility, you know, and for comfort. But when you're going to buy a toilet, most of the time they sell the comfort height toilets, the cheaper ones with the comfort height, which is a 17-inch toilet. And once we put it up on this raised raised area, we had a 21-and-something-inch toilet that was, you know, sticking up. So it was really comfortable, but your feet would dangle. And and then we had this ledge, you know, this three-inch ledge that the toilet basically stuck out to flush with that ledge. But we didn't, like, realize, like, when you go pee, you actually tuck your feet, if you're a male, you tuck your feet a little bit further under that toilet. And so older people who've had prostate issues or stuff like that, they need to be able to get their feet under the toilet to be able to have enough stream to be able to get make it to the bowl, basically. And so we got through Thanksgiving, and everybody's like, God, that's a stupid toilet. And in my mind, I'm like, I know, don't judge me. It's not how it's going to be. You know, I just did this so you guys could dump and, and make turds during Thanksgiving, but I'm ripping this up, and we're going to try it again. And so that's what we did. Today I pulled the, the new toilet and um, took the flange off and then grinded and sanded and grinded and leveled out that concrete where the flange was set because we were unlevel there too because the whole subfloor or the hole that we were pouring on was unlevel. So it's like we're, we'll be level and we're, we're stupid and we didn't build a box or anything. We're dumb. And for a lot of reasons. and but they weren't the right reasons. So I got it to where I cut out a big chunk to where you, like a probably like three feet on either side of the toilet and then notched it basically back to where then you could walk up and be further. You don't have a, to have a terrific stream to get, make it in the toilet. And I sanded down the entrance and I sanded the flange area to where it's level or as level as I could make it. And then had to kind of cut into my sewer pipe and angle a cut because our flange has a little bit of an angle on it. So anyways, I got it all. We we figured it out and we did it and we set the new toilet on there tonight and, it, and everything works. But the problem is that we bought a standard of 15 inch. So now we're 19 inches. Perfect or fish um and everything works except for our crappy our toilet now that we just bought is brand new you know because you try to buy the cheapest one you can the cheapest comfort height was actually cheaper than the one we bought it it's actually half the price but it holds more water to flush the turd okay and so now we bought the $150 jobber and you know, if you throw a turd in there, you'll probably have to flush three or four times to get that buckaroo down, you know, or get a poop knife out if you're not soft serve. And that is going to be the next issue that somebody judges us on and says, I love it, dude. I, I wish you had a different toilet. And it's like, I, you know, you would think. Just make, listen, if you're making toilets out there, I'm talking to you, Kohler. I'm talking to you, Moen. I'm talking to you, Mansfield. I'm talking to you, all you toilet manufacturers out there that are vying for toilet supremacy. Guys, the biggest issue is getting the turd out of the out of our life. Okay? That's what we're trying to do. So give us a tank that has more than a gallon of water in it, you know, and and flush the turd. We don't care about anything else. We're poor. You know, if we're buying a cheap toilet, all we want is turds out of our life. But only the rich get that. So we fixed everything, made it compliant, but in a way, it's like it's almost worse. You know, the pee situation's better, but, you know, you might have to flush twice just to get a whiz down. So that's why I'm covered in dust, because I was, if you've ever concrete sawed, you know, or, uh, or sanded concrete it's dusty and so I'm dusty dusty roads everybody so that was today um oh shit 
This episode, sorry, it's brought to you by. It's brought to you by Diamond CBD, which if you go to thewaterhead.com, which is a website that I own, um, thewaterhead.com. If you go there, it will be, it will take you to a place where you can click a link for Diamond CBD. And when you click that link, it takes you to that website, Diamond CBD. And then when you're there, you can buy drug. Okay. Um, it's CBD drug, but they'll put, they, what they put is a Delta in there. They'll put a Delta 9, a Delta 10, a Delta 8, a Delta, it doesn't matter. And so it's, they have little pins like this. This is a Delta 10 pin, which I enjoy. Um, it can take the edge off from time to time. Um, the gummies, I actually like the Delta 9 because it makes you kind of happier a little bit. And then, you know, you get a good night's sleep and we take them before bed. But it gets you kind of loopy a little bit, just a touch of loopiness. But if you buy from them through the waterhead.com and you click the Diamond CBD link, whatever you buy to make yourself loopy or or stoned or whatever it is, um, I'll get credit for it. So you do drug, you get you mess up and do do your thing, and I get paid is the point of what I'm saying right now. So consider it. Holidays are coming up. This one's all clogged up. That's the problem. If you have pockets, you get shit in them, and you can't suck your vape. This is carcinogen, is all I'm sucking. That's drug. That I just did right there. CBD is legal. <coughs> it's legal, but still drug. <coughs> this one that was too much. <coughs> Woo! Makes me sneeze too. <coughs> Should not have done that. Usually, that's just for show. I don't do it. <coughs> oh. Want to watch that happen? You can just subscribe to Con Radio on YouTube. So, anyways, I did write some notes. God dang! It's too much. Okay. Well, speaking of the holiday season, guys. Um, I had a recent event that happened that I thought was odd. Um, so where our taco shop is in Davenport, right across the street, you can see it if you, uh, watch our videos, sometimes we'll broadcast, uh, from, from the shop and we'll show you the window that we're looking out of. And it looks out at this gas station. That's the town and country grocery mart, you know, in this this small town right there on Route 66. And the interesting part about that is I don't go there very often. They serve rollers and a lot of uh, deep fried, fat fried, whatever foods there. And I'm sure it's all great because if you, you could, I mean, you could fry one of them turds that won't go down our toilet, you know, you could cut a chunk of that off and go take it over there to town and country and they'll fry it for you. Probably pretty damn good. And anyways, the other day I ran over there because I'm unfortunately, I'm addicted to tobacco product. I'm addicted. Sometimes I'm addicted to Copenhagen snuff and I want to quit it. It's a bad habit. You know, dipping's a bad habit, but somebody's got to do it. And I'm one of those guys that's doing it. So I walked over there to get myself a can of Copenhagen snuff. And when I walked in, and I, I said I was making sure that it's safe and effective. And so I walked in, safe and effective, and there was a woman who had great, looked a lot, her hair looked a lot like mine right now. And she was, you know, organizing the energy drinks. And she said, oh, 
I didn't know you were up here. I was like, uh, okay, I am, you know, boo. <laughs> and she walks around, she's like, well, what can I do for you? And I don't know if she knows that I'm the guy that's constantly across the street. I think she does, because she probably sees me walking over or walking back. But um, maybe not. And I said, I just need a can of Copenhagen stuff, please. And she said, okay. And she turned around. She's real small, shorter than I am. So anywhere from probably four foot seven to six foot three, you know, somewhere in there. When you're a tall guy like me, you sometimes just like it's hard to tell. But um, she turns around. She's like, okay, yeah, Copenhagen stuff. Here you go. She rings it up. She's like, oh, I do need to see some ID. I said, okay. You know, I don't, I've been asked that since I was 14 when I was buying this crap. You know, I get it. You know, you got to do your job. But for whatever reason, my face must not have said that. Because she said, I got to see some ID. And I said, oh, all right. I must have had a different face on because she said, I just got to ask because it's the holidays coming up. And I was like, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> I didn't say that either, but uh, okay. But, it got me thinking, it's like, what like what am I doing? Am I putting off some sort of aura? Am I putting off some sort of um RB RBF restless bitch face syndrome or whatever? What am I putting off that makes people have to ask me a question but then be like, I'm sorry I had to ask? You know, like I'm do I have a look on my face like, What the fuck did you ask me that? Which is probably what I have, you know, now that I think about it. But She's like, I'm sorry, I have to ask because it's the holiday season. It's like, all right. So I pulled it out, and um, she saw my age, which was double uh, the age you have to be to buy this poison. And she's like, oh, okay. Oh, we're the same age. And I was like, I didn't look like I do right now. I mean, I did, except for I had zero gray. And, you know, I'm hot and sexy and fit. And so she was like, we're the same age. And then almost as she ended it, she was like, and I was like, yeah, and you just asked me for ID. So you think I'm 18 years younger than what that thing says. That's how young you think I am. And we're the same age. And that's how old you look to me. Whoa. Mind warp, dude. So we got through that transaction and I left and I, I felt pretty good about myself. I told Shannon, like, Hey, be careful if you go buy cigarettes over there. They're checking ID because the holidays are coming up. Um, <laughs> still don't get. But I don't know. I just have this aura about me lately. I The other day, we had to go over to Walmart, which is a just a horrible experience at this point in society. Um, you're required to go if you want to find any kind of competitively priced item with something that you could get online so you're almost required to go if you're poor but the problem with walmart is they got a billion things and they got a billion employees to put their things where they go but all these idiots don't do shit i mean other than make sure there's more things for you to pick out you know they're marking down prices they're rolling back prices but they're not customer service you're the customer do your service is like their thing. You know what I mean? You, it's not, there is no customer service. They have a desk there with one person at customer service. The remainder of the store and all the employees you see, they don't work at customer service. If you've got a customer service problem, go talk to Deborah. She's over there. Okay, she's at the, do you see those big words that say customer service and that big line of people? Stand in that line and then talk to Deborah. But if you want service from me, just because I work here, lick it. And that's like Walmart. Walmart's like, Walmart, you're here. You know what I mean? Walmart, fuck it. And that's what it is. It's like, that's their tagline. So I'm standing in the self checkout aisle at, 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 fuck it, you're at Walmart, you work here now. And, it's almost like our prices are so cheap because you do all the labor. Like, that's what it is. Yet they still have to have a certain number of smock wearers to, you know, hold the 
whatever the shit is that they're holding, like the temperature scanner or whatever, you know, they got buttons on it. You can tell by the glazed look on these fellows' faces that they don't know what these buttons do. It could have one button that just says, don't die. You know, and every time you feel like stepping on a bomb, you press that button. It's like, that's what their button should say. Here, you work at Walmart now. Hold this thing. What do I do? The moment you want to commit suicide, hit it. And you'll still be working here. It's Jesus Christ. It's Walmart. And it's not Sam Walton's fault. I mean, it is. But he's dead. So he can't fix it. I don't think. So anyways, we get through. And I'm, I'm standing there waiting to check myself out. Waiting to do. And I don't. And I don't die on that hill. I'm not one of those people who's like, I walk through the snow or whatever. I don't do that crap very often, you know, and I don't give a shit. I would rather self-check out. I'd rather not deal with some mouth breather that, you know, triple scans an item because they're too stupid to know that they, they don't hear the beep. You know, I mean, I'd rather do it myself. I really would. So I don't like be like, oh, what, what am I? I should get paid. I'm an employee. I, I don't care. My point is the problem with your system is, Mr. Walmart, is every person that's using self-checkout is just as dumb as you, just as dumb as the person working here, you know? So you have to stand there waiting for a spot to open up to then you can be a great checker, but you had to wait for slow people that couldn't even work here. And it's like, you could, you don't have to do this part. Don't have to check people out and count back change? No! They'll do it. The robots will do it. So, anyways, I get up to my kiosk, and it's safe and effective. I put my stuff in, and then I'm walking, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to get out. I'm trying to get out of this freaking Walmart. But there is a fish, self-imposed fish, meaning, like, how many amendments are there? Are there 16 amendments, or... 27 or 28 I don't know I should read that there should be another if there's not there should be another 29th amendment where like it doesn't matter if your body can still work as an American you have a right to be like I don't want it to you know what I mean and that was what this woman had did and I see a lot of people choosing that option where she got into that wall E um, type hover cart thing to do her shopping. So she's zipping around getting her Cheetos and her, you know, Cocoa Krispies or whatever. And then she's at self-checkout. But the problem is if you're riding on one of those rideable shopping carts for 30th Amendment people, you know, you don't know how to park it at the robot. And so she pulls up to the robot self-checkout, but she's all half you know, she poured, she went to port, but she didn't get level, so they can't load, and she's got the cart next to there, she can't reach the screen, I mean, shit is going haywire, person that works there that's pushing the don't buy, she's, they're just pushing don't, don't die, don't kill myself, they're just pushing the button, everybody's freaking out, it's as if, it's just like a car accident's happening, one robot away from my robot, I get my robot done, safe and effective, I'm trying to just navigate myself around this thing, you know, and Shannon's behind me. He's got a cart. He can't get around this. So I like, I finally, I looked at Shannon's like, I got to do, I got to Billy Sims these people. I got to shake and bake right here. And so I got skinny, dude. I twisted a shoulder and I got skinny and I escaped between the back of the cart and just the, just the back of a man. You know what I'm saying? Like a, a movable, a moving wall. A lot of these Oklahoma people I meet, they have, I mean, just gargantuan shoulders and backsides on these Oklahomans down here. And so this man was trying to smush me into this cart lady. And it's like, I got to go and you can't get the cart through. Go around, dude. Leaving Walmart's like entering a war. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you don't know what's going to happen and you got to just react. And so I got skinny and I twisted through and I made it through with my bag of garbage. I checked it out. I found it. Nobody helped me. I'm going to return all this. And I get through them. And I'm like, I got a little confidence in me. Like, I made it. Shannon has to go around. 
and he's got to exit through the entrance, which is always an issue there. Like, what are you doing, sir? That that's the exit. It's like I can't get there, man. You know that kind of stuff. And he's just he's in he's still in Walmart, and I'm like, I'll get to go. And I got a little swag to me. I got my little smock here, my blue smock that I'm wearing right now, and I'm not gray. And my hair is probably askew. That happens from time to time now. And I'm walking out, and I must have just this aura about me, a different, like a sex appeal, like a dangerous sex appeal, because this girl who was also breaking the law, like Shannon, she was exiting through the entrance. She's walking out like, man, I made it, you know, I made it through that. And she starts checking me out. This woman's checking me out. Like, look at me. I walk out. I must have this, just this glow of, whoa, there's a living troll. And I walk out, you know, I I throw her blue steel, boom, give her that look. She looks at me, doesn't, wants to smile, but waiting for me to do it, to give her permission. And so I don't throw that smile. I'm blue steel. Walks directly into the door. <laughs> She was so attracted to me, so wet, <laughs> so attracted to me, um, checking me out so much that she did not look forward, and she walked directly into a door. But, like a gentleman, that, and I was raised this way, I didn't make fun of that woman for walking into a door because she was checking me out. In fact, like a true gentleman and like a true um, feminist, I did nothing. I walked by as if she didn't exist. <laughs> and I know she felt stupid. And if I addressed it, you know, like, oh, hey, um, are you all right? You know, then that turns into like how Harry met Sally. Like this, this guy I was checking out so hot. And then I hit the door, and then he asked me if I was all right. And I said, oh, I'm just I'm just absent-minded sometimes. You know, I'm silly. You know, I don't know what I was thinking. And he's like, oh, I get like that sometimes, girl. And then he's like, are you hungry? I see you. Did you get anything to eat in there? Are you hungry? And he's like, oh, I'm not really. I don't usually eat lunch. And he's like, oh, I'll take you over. How about let's go over there and get us some barbecue, girl. You know, whatever. I didn't want to risk that. I'm married. I got two kids. So I can't do that. But something's going on where people are thinking I'm young and people are thinking I'm hot. And I don't know what it is. They're scared of me. They're intimidated by my good looks and that my, feroc- my ferociousness and ferocity or something. But I'm keeping it safe and effective. Um, so. A lot of those girls probably wouldn't like me anymore if they knew the things my wife knows about me. You know what I'm saying? That's why I that's why I'm so loyal, really, to my wife. And really I'm just a loyal person, you know, and I've I've I don't know why. You know, I'm I'm getting ready to um get some life insurance because um uh, that's what a responsible adult does. You know, they get a, they get life insurance. So when you pass away, you're not <laughs> you're not a burden on the person you left behind. So work your whole life um, as hard as you can to make sure that your family has everything that they need. Um, and they might need things that you don't think are important, but it doesn't matter. That's part of raising people, and they have different needs than you. Learn it and and do that. You know, but it's not over when you die. You have to then take care of them more, and that's what life insurance is for. So make sure you have that. It's like, well, what is that? Is that free? No, it costs you every year a certain amount of money. And it's like, holy shit, but why? I'll be dead. They're like, it's the most selfless thing you can do. Oh, but usually I'm such a selfish bastard that's out working for them. Work harder, selfish bastard, and make sure they don't have to work when you die. Life insurance. So um, I've I've had the same company, Mass Mutual, for probably like six years now. And, you know, I was 
kind of watching commercials and I, I hear what people are saying sometimes. I'm like, I think I'm paying way too much for life insurance. But I bought it because the person that sold it to me needed, it was a family friend and they just started a new job. And I'm loyal to that person. It's like, my loyalty got me into Mass Mutual. And then every year when the renewal comes up, I'm like, yeah, they've been a good company. You know, they've been, I haven't died. So I don't know how, I mean, they really done nothing. I just give them a certain amount of money every year. And then, but you know, I feel good having them. I feel insured having them. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I feel insured. So um, this year I told my wife, I was like, maybe let's look for some different life insurance. That's maybe a little bit cheaper. And she found one that's about a third of the price. And so we'll be switching here pretty soon um, to that. But. You know, that's what I'm saying. I love my wife so much that I have life insurance. And she knows a lot of stuff about me. She knows I I care about her that much, but she also knows that, you know, it isn't all sunshine and roses when you are married to an autism person. And that's what she's been dealing with. And so she can giggle all she wants at the fact that, you know, all these women just based purely on aesthetic looks, on, on my good looks, yeah, they think I'd be great, but she knows firsthand that as polished as this outside is, there's some real questionable innards in this son of a bitch right here. So, and she's been great at dealing with it over the past, you know, 13 or 15 years, however long it's been. So she doesn't worry about those people and I don't worry about them either. And I don't stray. I'm loyal. I'm loyal to my life insurance. I'm loyal to my wife stuff. And, you know, she even knows I can't sit Indian style. You know what I mean? Which is a big deal. When you want to be a cult leader, because I feel like that's like part of what I'm putting off is, is that ability. You know, the thing that I'm drawn to the most is the ability to um, someday manipulate hundreds of people into listening to my message and profiting off of that. That is, that's a cult, you know, that's a cult. And that's what this podcast world is, is a cult. And I've been chopping that wood for, for over 10 years, trying to get you guys to join my cult and pay me because you like what I have to say about things. My wife gets it, but she also has never seen me sit Indian style. And if you can't sit Indian style, Joe Rogan right now is sitting Indian style. You know, Adam Carolla is sitting Indian style. Even as tall and goofy and ugly as that man is, he's Indian style. I can't do it, and that's why you guys aren't drawn to me yet. I have I have the part where it's like, what? We should be listening to this man. Gentlemen, please sit Indian style. My wife knows that, and she still loves me, and she still likes the message. So, I don't stray. I'm loyal. I'm loyal. Um, I did have an idea for an invention. I should tell you about this. I do this from time to time. I think about words that people use all the time, like safe and effective, and then I want to implement them for different reasons into my life. And so that's why right now, like if you were to go, or well, not right now, but within a couple months, If you were to go to OKTacoCompany.com, you would see it in our store that there would be a t-shirt that says OK Taco, and on the back it would say safe and effective. That will be there very soon. So email me or comment when you want one, and um, I'll make it happen very soon, as in like maybe even tomorrow with my good looks. Um, but I have ideas. And I hear things that have been said before and I think of them in a different way and that's it's it's it's, it's a play on words, it's a pun, it's all those things. But what I don't understand is that tobacco, whether it be the smokeless version or the lightable version, tobacco tobacco is legal. You can sell it. 
And you can advertise it, but just not... I don't think you can advertise it on TV. There's like... You can make a poster to put at the store. Or maybe you can be on billboards. But there's some limitations to the tobacco industry that the uh, puppet masters have put. That's why you don't see the Marlboro Man commercials or the Chesterfield commercials where one in three doctors recommends Chesterfields or two in three dentists say Marlboros are actually better th- for your teeth. Which should be, I mean, that should be like we should watch that and realize, uh-oh, all this has been a sham this whole time. And we think like we're not living in one. That was those dumb people. They're the ones who got fooled, not us. We figured it out. Smoking is bad. And it's like, yeah, okay, but doctors did recommend it. You know, Dr. Fauci from 1920 did tell people to smoke Chesterfields. Yeah, but Dr. Fauci now wouldn't be telling us bad things. And we're like, hmm. Okay, that's off the topic. My point is, as long as you can, you can still make cigarettes. There should be a Christian-based cigarette called the Holy Smoke. Why is that not a thing? Holy Smokes. Go get me a pack of Holy Smokes for the Christian, for the discerning Christian that wants to take the edge off. How about, ooh, I had a long day. I can see it in your eyes, babe. You've had a tough day. What's going on? Oh. Remember that new toilet we put into the taco shop? Yeah, I thought it was fine. Yeah, but it's not to regulation according to the government. Oh, what are you going to do? Well, that's what I did today. I grinded and sanded and made it lower, and I notched out an area for elderly people to be able to pee. And then I put a shorter toilet on it. Oh my, Paul, that sounds like a really stressful day. It was. Here, Paul, have a holy smoke. Thank you, babe. Holy smokes, that helps take the edge off. Holy smokes, the cigarettes that get you closer to God. Because someday, you'll be there. Because we all die. And you'll probably get there sooner because you smoke tobacco. Holy smokes. That's a commercial for a fake cigarette that I was thinking about. And then I was thinking, well, it could be pot, but pot people are usually are pretty creative. They probably already have the holy smoke, which would mean that I probably can't do it. And I don't even know if you can make a new cigarette company anymore. And a lot of people probably don't even try. So, probably stupid. But I was just thinking about cigarettes because the holidays are coming up. Ah. <laughs> uh. Um, the only thing worse, oh, that's not true. In the things aren't that bad category and the bitching about everyday life category, the only thing worse than experiencing a trip to Walmart is whatever's happening on TV right now um, on NBC, on the big networks, on an Antenna TV. So if you got an Antenna, you got CBS, ABC, NBC, and like Fox, okay? It's got the big four right there that are news and they still have programming. That's just, you know, network-based programming. And... uh, Today, when I was um, cooking up an Irish diamond uh, in the microwave, a couple potatoes in there, I turned on our TV in the party room at the taco shop, which is beautiful. It's a beautiful TV, and it's a beautiful room. And I turned it on, and lucky for me, I did, because I I just got to catch the end of the uh, a program called The Talk on CBS. and. It used to be a spinoff of The View, but I think there was like some sexual misconduct with Les Moonves, the 
the president of CBS. I think he got Me Too'd, and then they refigured the talk, and they made it more inclusive. And so they got like a giant black lady and a hot white chick that hosts it, and then a a hot former actor, and then a hot black guy. Um, so it's like maybe three women, two men, black, black, white, white, probably Asian. I haven't seen the, I don't remember the third, you know, in that situation. But they have to check all the boxes because God forbid you be labeled as something that's uninclusive or non-inclusive. And so they checked the boxes and I just felt horrible for these people. I think they were, um... I forget the actor's name that they had on that was promoting a new movie, but God damn it. Just heard his name too. I know his name. He's a legendary curmudgeon. And so these people just have to sit there and try to conduct an interview with an, with an uninterested guest about an uninterested project, about an uninteresting category on an uninteresting show with an uninterested audience. It's like, good luck. But yet, that's still on the air. But luckily it was over. And it happened. And I said, God, thank God I got to catch the end of that. And all that led to was I got to catch the beginning of a show that I've come to to know. A show that I think, you know, I'll model a lot of my shows after moving forward. And that's a Drew Barrymore show. That's the Drew Barrymore show, guys. So the Drew Barrymore show, I might have even switched networks, but the talk ended, I turned the channel, I think, and I found out that good thing I turned the channel because guess what's just starting? It's the Drew Barrymore show. And why this woman refuses to put on makeup and and wear David Byrne-style suits is confusing to me, but it's also intriguing. And so I say, Let's see what she's wearing today. And so what happens is she's wearing an orange suit, (laughs) an oversized, uh, what is that movie? Dumb and Dumber style suit. And Drew Barrymore comes walking on with no makeup, looking like a big old piece of something that can't be flushed at OK Taco. And she walks right to the front of the audience. And the audience is like, yeah. And then they show the audience. And they're all wearing the exact same medical surgical mask. It's like, guys, it's almost 2023. The president said you don't have to wear a mask. Dr. Fauci said you don't have to wear a mask. Yet you're still wearing a mask. And you're watching Drew Barrymore live. And it was wild. And I laughed hard at that. But I realized she's being safe, in effect. And so Drew Barrymore gets there on the stage and she's like, Hey, everybody. Ah, happy Thursday. It's December 1st. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. I'm so glad you're here at the show today. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Drew Barrymore, and ah, I felt like it. I felt like putting on an orange suit today. Because today we have a guest. The reason I pick orange, because today we have a guest as a cultural icon. Drew, that doesn't... What does wearing orange have to do with... I mean, you know, you could have Colin Kaepernick behind that curtain, but George Floyd could be... You know, we could have pulled him up like we did Jizo and and pumped him th- full of something and got him back to life and you know he could be a, he's a cultural icon. I don't know what cultural icon you have behind the curtain, but I don't know what the hell wearing orange has to do with cultural icons. You know, if if a cultural icon wants to come down to my restaurant, should I put orange on? Yeah, like if somebody says Conrad, Garth Brooks is coming. And I'd be like, "Uh uh-oh, I should put orange on. He's a cultural icon for the stupid idiot out there. But I know that orange means cultural icon. 
She never referenced it. All she did say was, Ladies and gentlemen, Whoopi Goldberg. (laughs) And so, um, Whoopi come out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Drew and Whoopi went at it for however long. I had to turn it off. Um, Apparently, Sister Act 3 is coming out with Whoopi. So, like, go away. Go away. No one cares. It doesn't matter. You're doing everything for a paycheck, and it's garbage, and no one cares. Both of you, I'm sorry. It's okay. Did great stuff. You did great stuff. You were in 50 First Dates. You were in Sister Act 1 and 2. You were on The View. You were um, in that basketball show, Ed, or something, where you coached with a monkey or you kissed Dan Aykroyd. I don't know what you did. You died in My Girl. But shit, go away. We don't care about your orange suit. The people in this audience are here to clap wearing masks. That's it. It doesn't matter what we put on this stage. They'll clap wearing masks. That sign says clap and laugh and applause. It says applause. And those idiots are people that go here and they do it. They applause. And it's like, what are they applauding for? Is it really good? No. The sign said applaud. They applauded. The sign said put the mask on. They put it on. That's what they did. So I got to go inside, but. I'm going to hang up on you right now. Um, My kids are getting ready to go to bed. Thanks, guys, for listening to the Connie G Show. Um, Thanks for all the applause throughout the show and for the past 15 years. Um, Sorry I look like shit tonight, but even as shitty as I look, I feel like I could make somebody walk into a door. But I wouldn't cheat on my wife. I'm loyal. I'm loyal to everything, including life insurance. So um, stay safe and effective out there, everybody. And uh, I'll be back next week. Um, Don't let your meatloaf, there's a carp in the tub, and have an okay day.